Tom Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today I have Seamus. Seamus, your last name? Nat. And Seamus is from where? We're about an hour north of Detroit, Michigan. And what's your museum? Stahl's Automotive Foundation. Go check out Stahl's Automotive U Museum because we can show you this car. And we're going to show it to you here in Pebble Beach. Let me show you what we got. Seamus, what year making model is this one? The 1963 Chrysler Turbine Car. Let's take a look at our featured attraction. So we have Terry in outfit in the car. And here's your turbine car. Now, if you're already at this point, you actually saw Seamus drive by, so you heard the turbine car. And how many of these turbines actually run? Uh, I think there's six out of the nine that run. Well, I just came over. Six out of the nine that are left. We're going to give you a shot on the side of this car. We're going to take a look at the side of this car. In the, look in the back. So now. Seamus, tell me about the design. There's some like almonds. Tell me what you'd like to share with me about this car. So Chrysler had Ghia in Italy build the bodies. Ghia spent about twenty thousand. It cost Chrysler twenty thousand dollars for Ghia to build these bodies. And when Chrysler received the bodies from Ghia, they were painted. They're ready to go. All Chrysler had to do was put the the, the drivetrain and the engine in. And uh, Ghia had put so much lead on the bodies that Chrysler did not anticipate having to deal with 400 pounds of extra weight. And to compensate for that, the hood and the trunk lid are aluminum. And then I think what's really neat is they put the turbine blade design everywhere in the car. If you look there, you can see the reverse lights. They look like jet propulsion units coming out of the rear of the car. But uh, there's no exhaust that comes out of there. The exhaust comes out of the bottom side, but you can see the fins there. Yeah, they look great. If you look at the white walls And the on trunk, this. I know, has got all your stuff in there, so we're not going to go to the trunk. Yeah. The trunk is doing what it's supposed to. Go ahead. Now, you're saying about the white walls. Talk yeah. about that. So these these tires are Chrysler turbine tire, tires only. These are the original tires. You can see the turbine fan blade design even in the wheels here. And look, it's even in the hubcaps, you can see the fins. Let's open it, shall we? And even in the interior, go ahead. Yeah, in the interior, they incorporated more turbine design. The tube going through the center of the car, inside the horn button here, all the switches and knobs. <laughs> if you look at the rear view mirror, even that has turbine fins on it. And it's even glued onto the windshield, which is a very early style of glue. They, they, nobody was doing that. Everyone had their their uh, mirrors mounted on on the, the roof pillar or maybe on the panel. Can you open that up? That originally, a very futuristic looking design. Go ahead, you're saying. Originally, the interior had a lot more orange. They thought it was too much, so they added some stainless steel interior motifs and some white plastic trim around the edge. But this is actually leather. They dyed it orange. And they, uh, this color, though, is, is referred to as turbine bronze. And all 55 of these turbine cars were all painted turbine bronze. And I'm noticing it goes up to 60,000 RPM. Yeah, but it really redlines at 44,600 RPM. And Chrysler said if you were in third gear, if the automatic transmission had reached third gear and you were going 44,000 RPM, your speed would be 108 miles per hour. But it, it idles at 18 to 20,000 RPM, and you're operating temperatures about 1,200, 1,300 degrees, unlike your piston-driven car that's operating at 180 degrees. Let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Sure thing. So we can pull that open, and as we open this up... Now I'm going to actually have a footage of the judges, and the judges is no 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 surprise. We've got Gordon Murray, who uh, has the turbine design on the back of his car, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And even at that point, when they stuck it in the Plymouth, it was it was, it was top secret. It really wasn't until they took the tour with the Dodge Turbo Dart. They put one in a Dodge Dart. 
and then drove across the country that the public realized that, oh, the price of this is right. And Ford messed with it too, but they bought Boeing engines, company cars, and, and General Motors made space age cars that weren't practical. <laughs> and Chrysler tried to make it practical for the everyday man. And so eventually they came around to this generation car. And they wanted to start the greatest public marketing scheme of all time. And they thought there was no better way to test the cars than to put them into the public's hands. Because if you have an engineer test the cars, it's very analytical. He's going to do this and that, and he's not going to drive them like the average public would. So it's better not to put it in the hands of a 21-year-old or a 73-year-old. That was the span of ages that the people got. And it was it was anybody. It was school teachers, lawyers, dentists, How many cars doctors. did they build? They made 55. The first five were prototypes. The exhaust gases were too high. They feared that if a kid crawled underneath, he would melt. And so the 50 <laughs> after that... <laughs> I still got my arm. <laughs> and uh, the 50 after that, they uh, figured out how to solve that problem. And Chrysler develop the regenerators. If I pop the hood, I can show you yeah. where those are. They heat up the air going into the turbine, so it, it helps with the fuel economy. It's so better. It's preheating. Yeah, yeah it's preheating. Plus, when the air is compressed, it, it heats up. So these, these are the regenerators. And so the, when the turbine engine is spinning at 20,000 RPM, these are only spinning at 22 RPM. A lot slower. And it was, I forgot how many feet of material, but it was four the metal was four thousand seven inch thick. Super fast. And the, the construction of it looks like corrugated uh, cardboard. That's what the, but it's a, it's a big circle. They're proud of that. And then. There were a lot of problems they occur, that occurred over time. Car number or nine, up to car number 19, the compressor blades on the turbine shaft were friction welded. And around 20, 25,000 miles, that turbine blade would let go and it would just explode inside the engine. And one of the first ones happened to Bill Carey. Bill Carey is the guy that you called if you had any problems. Like, and uh, he's like, wow, well, there's no holes. Well, our construction works. That, at least that part's safe for the public. And so uh, what they ended up doing was it was really early on in the 60s so some of these with the EDM welding, the, you know, the electron the welding. Yeah. And so they, they said well. that's going to be our best <laughs> bet for solving the issue. <laughs> but the problem was it was so new, it was so expensive. Chrysler's was like, I don't... I, I, we don't want to pay for this. Like, if you want to continue the program, you're going to have to buy into the EDM welding. That's what it is. They use EDM welding to weld the compressor blade onto the turbine shaft. And everything was investment casting inside, which was a big problem why Chrysler couldn't mass produce it. That was one of the biggest problems why they never went into mass production. So even the big castings were investment castings? I'm sorry? Even the big castings were investment castings, were they? I don't know from that. And they ended up using a regular torque flight oh, three speed transmission, so they didn't have to make any special transmission. They eliminated the torque converter because it was a lot like the turbine engine, but they had to reduce the RPMs. So they added gear reduction, it goes 10 to 1, so 20,000 RPMs, 2,000 RPM transmission. And it's just standard three speed. I don't remember what the ratios are to the three speeds. And I think they replaced a few parts. The turbine engine doesn't have its own oiling system. It uses the same oiling system that the transmission has. They created a bigger oil pan, a little bit more oil sump. And there's just a lot less parts that wear inside of a turbine engine compared to a piston engine. Nearly every part of a piston engine wears. There's only a few parts in this engine that wear. Everything's free floating. There's even some parts where they couldn't get the oil to them, but they get air to them. The air is well, the parts are touching each other. It doesn't, doesn't create vacuum like a piston engine, so they had to put a compressor on. So it's like air over hydraulic brakes. And you gotta wait for the red light to turn off before you drive, because your brakes are pretty hard. What other improvements they made? We could run it on almost anything. 
and not lead into the old lead did something with the alloys and then it wasn't compatible. Uh, the most common thing that the contestants used at the time was diesel. Some people went down to the local Texaco station because you got you got to trust the man with the star. And they would order a 55-gallon drum of kerosene, and they would just go fill up with that. They sent one. One went to Mexico, and they were wondering if they could run off tequila. They called back to Chrysler. So I had a couple guys run out to a liquor store, got some bottles, poured it into a test engine. It worked. Called back to Mexico. Yeah, it worked. You could try it out. They, yeah, they were ecstatic. You got to run it on their own, their own, their own uh, fuel. And uh, there was rumors one ran off the Chanel perfume, number five in Paris. Uh, you can use peanut oil. They've used uh, peanut oil at some fair, and it smelled like there was popcorn. Yeah, one point they did. And uh, I remember. Oh, I think this is just too cool. So, in a, in a piston engine, you measure your vacuum and or your in, your intake in inches or something like that. With this, you measure the air coming in in pounds. So there's 2.2 pounds of air going into the engine. Every second. That's 19, it travels at a rate of 1,900 feet per second, which is just under 1,300 miles per hour. Yeah, it comes in here and has these two air cleaners. Chrysler said that you could clean the air cleaners uh, two times before you had to replace them. Yeah. Blow them off, run them off of the hose, and just let them dry. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Very informative. And we're back. And believe it or not, the engine only weighs 410 pounds. Really? Yeah. That's super light. That's super light. Seamus, what a fun time seeing you out here. What a great time hanging out with you. Thanks for being in my car store. Thanks, Lou. Uh,